The Riley and Kimmy Show at Mike's Comics and Collectibles out on Orange Blossom Trail Road in Orlando, Florida. It is free comic book day as we record this. And one of the things going on with this big celebration of nerdom, geekdom, is artist Jason Fabok is right here in the store signing. Matter of fact, right next to me right now. And we're welcoming him right to the Riley and Kimmy Show. Thank you for coming on, Jason. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate you being here. I, I you matter of fact, I'm just going to say thank you for everybody in the store because uh, you've, you've come down here to Orlando. You're from Canada, right? Yes, yes. I live in uh, just across from Detroit in a city called Windsor in that area, Windsor, Ontario. Okay. And is it still cold? For us, like, would we think it's cold up there you right now? You guys might think it's cold, but for uh, where I live, it's jokingly called the banana belt of Canada because we don't really have harsh winters, It's and we have super hot, muggy summers. So okay. uh, right now it's starting to get that, it's starting to get hot, warm out. It's uh, it maybe in the mid-70s, almost or early 80s kind of weather-wise. But uh, so coming down here, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit warmer than what it would have would be back in Canada but uh, so you're very similar like to Detroit their yeah. weather pattern and everything yeah, yeah. Ex exactly exactly so that's what that's what Kimmy and I grew up in in the Midwest in the yeah. Chicagoland area so awesome. you know very similar mm -hmm. kind of thing where you see snow maybe clear into April yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we had that and then it would be beautiful for a week and then back to crazy snow again so yeah yeah so well we're happy you're here you got some sunshine I don't know if you had any up there where we're from you some it was a hit or miss if you'd have sun or not mm -hmm. um, but you been meeting fans here today at Mike's Comics, and you have this beautiful print that you had available uh, of Batman. I, I, I'm just going to, I have to ask this, even though I'm pretty certain I know the answer. Is Batman one of your favorites, if not your favorite? <laughs> yeah, I'd say Batman is my favorite yeah, character in all of, I don't know, pop culture, literature, that kind of thing. Um, he's He's been my favorite since I was a little kid. I grew up watching the reruns of the Adam West TV show as a, as a little youngster and then you know saw the Michael Keaton movie Batman movie on TV one night and was like how is this the same Batman like what is going on here but I, I loved that version and and followed up by watching the Batman animated series and and he's just always been my my favorite character his look the way he looks you know the way the character acts he's this dark shadowy figure but you know he's a good guy you know he's on your side you know and uh you know i've always been really attracted to him and uh and superman would probably be the other character that i've always had a connection to so, as well so you're going from dark to light or light to dark with yeah. those two characters right mm -hmm. i mean you got the full spectrum kind mm -hmm. of there yeah and superman it was always the the movies the superman christopher okay. reeve movies seeing those on tv and i think i taped them off of on my vcr when we were kids and just love that show when i when i hear those movies when i hear that theme song it okay. still gives me chills you know it's uh but yeah you know superman i, I don't know I, to me the everything about superman just the the truth justice in the american way kind okay. of ideal is is just something that has always resonated with me and uh I love that character as well, and and I love it when they work Batman and Superman get oh, to work yeah. together. You know, it's it's always a really cool thing. No, did I wasn't going to go there. What about the Batman versus Superman movie? Did you like that? Or are you too nerdy, geeky, or fanboy to? You know, I had friends both ends of the spectrum. They either really loved it or they didn't like it a lot. Mm. No, I I really liked it, uh, but I, I'm biased. I mean, I work for DC Comics, right. so. Um, I, I being invested in these characters and working on these characters it's always a great joy to go to the theater and then see them come to life in some way it's really a surreal kind of thing even though I, I had nothing to do with the movie but you know seeing the Ben Affleck Batman the way his costume was more towards the comics was really cool to finally see that and and I personally I liked Man of Steel uh, I, I, I liked I liked Batman v Superman and, and I'm excited to kind of see you know where the DC movies will go and and be a little bit different than the Marvel movies and but I think all in all it's a great time to be a, a fan of comic books and comic book movies they're doing great things with all these different characters on the big screen they're finally coming out to life and uh, you're gonna I think just like you've seen many different interpretations of Batman you're gonna see many different interpretations of the Justice League and Superman and all these characters in the future and um, 
you know, yeah, like a, from from an art. I'm curious from DC what you can reveal. Do they do they say okay, we have this movie project we're working on, and because you, you're Justice, I mean you've done Justice for a long period of time now. Mm-hmm. Um, did they say okay, we need you to tweak it towards a movie standard, a, a look? We're going to go for this. Did they give you a heads up or anything and try to? change the comic book towards the the films or tv shows in any way you know what in all honesty they don't um i think anything that i've done is because of my own personal desire to because i like some of the stuff coming out of the films you know i like the designs that they're doing for these movies i you know i really liked you know the whole one uh, with justice league we we jeff johns allowed me to do my own take on Wonder Woman, mm. right? And it, it, the story goes is that he he had seen an old sketch I did years ago of Wonder Woman in more of a, a Greco-Roman uh-huh. battle outfit. And it just so happened that they released this whole image with the Wonder Woman from the movie and her costume and my costume design that I did a long time ago kind of resembled that. And so Jeff said, hey, let's, let's use that, you know? And so we kind of did a fusing of the two and put that in the book. And we got a really good fan response from it. And... Um, but you know, you, like you said, being a visual person, when I see, I'm inspired by something I see in a movie, it's kind of like, yeah, that's that's a cool design element. I'm going to use that in some way with this character or that character. And, and uh, DC working with, I can't say this, but working with Jeff Johns, who's the chief creative officer, he can. When I say, hey, I would like to redesign this character, he goes, yeah, sure, sounds good. Whoa. But with you know other books, you might not get that opportunity but with him it's been really cool he's given me a lot of freedom to do those things and it makes my job fun too do you see a like a detailed script from somebody like him uh i mean the really hardcore movie type script coming down uh, or is it do you have a loose type script when you're drawing jeff hand jeff hands me a pretty uh detailed script for every issue now when deadlines are more tight sometimes i'll see the script but maybe with no None of the conversations or the texts. It will okay. mostly be just the descriptions and maybe a description of what they might say. Oh. Uh, but most of the time, he hands me a script that is down to the letter exactly what's what the characters are going to say, so I can make the facial expressions. Res- you know, he he, and I like that personally. I I know some artists like to work with a more loose script. I want to know exactly what I need to draw in this panel because that might come back and this panel over here you know what i mean like i want to i want detailed script work and then but he still gives you enough space as an artist to play with it and wow. choose your camera angle and if i need a close-up here or do i need to pull back more you know that kind of thing now out of curiosity i've heard that uh somebody who's working in the industry in you know like dc that they judge a success per- personally if they're doing over a page a day uh cranking out is that what's expected pretty much yeah generally um i've on justice league because it was a monthly book uh, i had to produce a page to a page a day sometimes it but uh, most of the time it takes me about a day and a half to do a page so that means i'd have to work my weekends to make up that extra time Um, so it turns the job into a seven seven uh, days a week job Um, but it's something you love to do and you it's not really work. Okay. It, do, you, do you lose track of time when you're doing yes. it? Yes. Okay. The year will fly by, and I'm like, what? What did I do this year? Uh, you know. So literally, so, you know, sometimes the the books you pick up is literally one month of my life because that's all I did. You know. Um, but it it rain it it varies de- uh, depending on the project. Like working on a single character book, like a Batman or I don't know Superman book, um, you might not. Uh, you might it might the pages might go quicker because you're only drawing maybe one character batman and maybe a villain on that okay. page but when you're drawing justice league and every panel has like six people in it that takes a lot longer and it's a lot more hours and a lot more stress to try and figure out where all these characters are in proportion to each other and that just adds the time so it's a totally different game drawing a team book like a justice league or you know, the same thing would be if you're working on Marvel with Avengers than if you're doing a single character book like a Superman or Batman or something like that. Now, jumping to a cover artist, because you, you do covers, mm-hmm. and because my question is, we have some listeners who are artists who want to become 
in the game, if you will, the one of the big two. Mm -hmm. And I have some who listen to this show. All they want to do is covers, they say. Mm -hmm. They haven't done any sequ sequential. I've said I think maybe you're dreaming a little bit here. Is that is that dreaming? I mean, do they have to get that sequ the sequential world mastered before you know yes. the cover? Yes. Um, you know, if you're the reason why some guys like Adam Hughes or I don't know Alex Ross, these guys mm -hmm. just do covers is because they spent years doing interiors as well, and just decided after a while, hey, I'm, I just want to focus on the cover game. And they're only going to give covers really to your artists who are your the best-selling guys who know that they're going to sell a, a book just by the cover. And you need to build up a fan base by working on interior work. Um, but, you know, and, and a lot of times the companies won't look at your portfolio unless you have just sequential work mm -hmm. you know if they see a portfolio of just covers and pinups they won't even look at it so wow. my my biggest thing i always tell young people who are trying to make it in the industry is do a portfolio it should be six pages of just story wow. story sequential stuff because if you can show them that you can draw everything and tell a story visually without even any words in it then you have a way you have a big chance of a bigger chance of getting getting work than if you just hand in unless you're an incredible painter and you can do these absolutely gorgeous covers or something like that. But that's a long, it's a long shot on both ways, but you're going to have a much bigger, better chance at finding consistent work. If you can draw the sequential interior stuff, that's where the money's at. Do, do you think the exposure or to be discovered is found by going to the cons with the portfolio or is it now online where hmm. they're going to be discovered, you know, through the Instagrams and Facebook pages okay. and stuff like that? It's different for everybody. Uh, with me, I sent my port. I, I live in uh, Windsor, Ontario, like I was mentioning, and David Finch, the artist, is he lives like 30 minutes away from me. So I sent my stuff to him and asked him if he could give me a critique and that turned into him inviting me over to his house Whoa. and then six months later after going to his house every day to work on stuff i he gets me it helps me get a job at dc wow so my journey into comics was very different it was okay. all about who i knew um whereas other guys it's they go to the cons they hand their portfolio to everybody they get critiques they go home they work for another six months on a new portfolio then they go back to the con and they do it again um there have been some guys who've been discovered through the internet as well um there's no yeah. real answer I think it's not because of the it's made it different with the internet, but it also has made it much more um, cutthroat, uh, a lot more competition because you're, you're not you're global, right? Yeah, you're not just competing against guys in New York, <laughs> you know, like it used to be where you had to work in New York if you wanted to be in comics. It's guys yeah. from Brazil, and well, guys and from the Philippines. That's what I was going to say. The Philippines seem to be a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. and you know, Canada and, and, you know, so it's, it's a much more, a lot more competition and it's a lot harder once you get into the industry, you also, it's not an easy ride. Now it's, you have to make sure you make that deadline every single month to build up the trust that the company has in you to give you the bigger project, mm. to give you a contract so that you can have steady work. And you got to keep performing, you know, even if you're a superstar, I think there's still that, you know the guys who've worked in the industry for a lot of years they can't necessarily slow down or cut too many corners because you know the the next hot shot might be coming up mm. after you trying to take your job it's it's that kind of a thing and and um but i think in the end if you if you work hard you have a really good work ethic and some talent and really strive at at your goals i, I you know anything is possible and i think you can make it in the industry um, but you know, it's all hard work. It's nothing is easy. Nothing, nothing worth it ever comes easy and quick. I think an actor would say that. A musician, they'd say the same thing, wouldn't you? I mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's the same. You know, my dad was a fire was a firefighter, and he the things he had to go through to to make it as a professional firefighter it was really it was I think something that inspired me to work really hard to try and get to where I'm at. You know, so. Are there others in your family that have your skills? Yeah, my brother, uh, he's a he's a 3D modeler for Ubisoft up in Toronto, which is a video game company. They do Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell and all kinds of different things. Um, so he 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 kind of had a similar journey to mine, where he worked for like four years on a portfolio, sent it out to all these companies, 
finally heard something. You know, he's working at a Walmart, coming home, working on his portfolio, setting his portfolio out, doing that for like four years. And finally, Ubisoft was looking for somebody who was, had no experience that they could mold. And, wow. you know, he got a job. And so he's been working on all these different video games. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, it's just kind of weird. My, both my brother and I both have kind of met our goals in, in art. And, wow. Uh, yeah, it's just it's cool. Yeah, but you know, my parents would be like, I don't, I don't know where they got the the talent. You know, they never did much drawing. Uh, but my my family's always been creative. My grandfather builds was a farmer, but he would he would build and repair his own machine and machinery. And if he needed something, he just build it. You know, out of nothing. You know, what <laughs> scraps in it. MacGyver. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, it's kind of I think that creativity has always just flowed down to us. I guess so. Yeah. Now, I have to ask a question. I'm gonna jump over back to. Because you draw so many characters, you know what you. Do. What is the the hardest? I mean, the the one where you go, oh boy, I'm drawing him or her. Is there one? I have a one. I'm gonna have in the back of my head. I'm gonna guess it might be, but uh, that they throw out to you that you say, uh, because of you know mm -hmm. consistency, continuity with the character. Yeah. Is there a tough one there? I think anytime you have characters that have lots of like armor and stuff, uh, you know, like let's say Deathstroke, maybe. Yeah, like a guy like that, or Lex Luthor. Yeah, I had a lot of fun drawing Lex Luthor in his armor, but it, yeah, it take you know when you come to a panel like that, it's like, well, do I show the whole th character? Do I just do a cropped close up? You know, like how to to speed myself up. Uh, I find that I, whenever I design a character, I put a lot of detail in, into it, and I think it looks really cool at first, but then when you're like five issues in and you realize you have to draw this character every day, I'll, but you know, I'll find that I slowly simplify the costume as the book goes along, but uh, yeah, you know, but in the end, it's, it's all about time management. If, when you know you have a, a page like that that you really have to draw, you, you find ways of shaving off time on other pages that maybe don't matter so much so that you can spend that extra time on all that detail uh you know when you need to so okay yeah wow i didn't realize that you know yeah. that part that's kind of cool when you're thinking about that i just i always thought the armor part would be a, a big pain in a not pain in a butt but just found that detail you know it, well it, yeah it can be but uh, but those are also the pages i find that, that people really respond to and they're like wow look at all that detail and that's what you want you know that's what seems like that gets you a lot of people to follow your work so well jason i gotta let you get back to the fans here but before i do what is in store that you can reveal in the very near future for jason fabok and dc comics well we got uh on may 25th we have the final issue of our justice league run comes out read that issue before you read the dc rebirth special Whoa. because if you read it the other way around it'll spoil everything that's happening in our justice league book if you've been following that um, I, you know, I'm really proud of that issue. I spent a lot of hours on that book. Um, after that, I'm taking a little bit of a break. Uh, I've, I've been working really hard this last, you know, two years on Justice League. It's been a lot of long hours. My wife and I want to do a little bit of traveling. And then I think uh, after that, there's going to be something that will be announced. I can't say what it is, but it comes out of the ending of our Dark Side War story in Justice League. And uh, we got a Jeff John. I can say that I'm going to work with Jeff Johns on some stuff for the next couple of years, and uh, it'll be uh, all things that kind of come out of that. And so I'm excited. These are these are things that Jeff has been talking to me about for months down the line. So, uh, Fan fantastic. Awesome, Mike. Why why do you why why? why? This is Jason's favorite Batman, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's the Michael Keaton hot toy. Awesome. Yeah, look how wow. sweet that looks. I love these. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm a I'm a geek, and I like to collect all things Batman. And same here. And uh, you know, my office is just filled with all my little toys and collectibles. And one thing that people might not know about me is I, I, I'm really I really want to design some toys for DC. I Whoa. keep I keep throwing that out every time I can talk about toys. And uh, I got some stuff coming, actually. They actually asked me to do some things. So um, I hope maybe maybe this year when I'm taking it down a little bit, maybe I'll get to do, do some of my own toys and design some Whoa. of my own toys for DC. But that, that's one of my geek out moments would be, is like, if I could do that. So Wow. I, I look forward to seeing and maybe having those toys in the collection. Yeah, hey. maybe. Yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty excited about uh, the opportunity to maybe do some of that. So. Well, Jason, I'm going to let you get back to the fans. Thank you for being on the Riley and awesome. Kimmy show, and I hope some other day in the near future we can have you back on. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Anytime. Anytime.